Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra. And in this module, we're gonna talk about adding collision to your XR origin when you're moving around. This is something that you might find as soon as you add locomotion onto your XR origin, you can walk through walls and you also can't go up slopes. Your entire world basically has to be flat but we can set things up so that you can actually experience some pushback from walls and some push up from the floors so that you can go up and down sloped objects and terrains and things like that. But we'll run into a couple of problems with our collider in that we need to make sure that our collider represents where our head and camera is, but you can't, it, it's hard to get the illusion of height if you just put a sphere collider onto your head. So we're going to, do a couple of things to, through code, set the collider that represents where we are standing. And then we're going to be able to not walk through walls and go up slopes. Let's go into Unity and set up a basic Unity uh, scene. I'm here in the player collision scene. This module assumes that you've already at least once installed the XR Interaction Toolkit. So I'm going to go ahead and create for myself an XR Origin, and it'll be the XR Origin VR. I'll make sure to delete the old main camera. I'm going to actually reset the position of our XR Origin to 000, so I can put a plane in the same place. I'm going to go ahead and create this plane and reset the plane as well. So here we got, we've got a plane and we've got an XR origin. If I wanted to add some form of locomotion to this, I could either have teleportation or the one that I'm going to be using to demonstrate this is continuous movement. So on my XR origin, I'm going to go ahead and add a locomotion system as well as I'm going to make sure to go into window package manager. I'm going to go down to XR interaction toolkit open up the samples and make sure I've imported the starter assets. Once I've imported the starter assets, I can go in my assets folder to the samples folder under XR Interaction Toolkit 2.2.0 or whatever version number you've got. Under starter assets, I'm going to find this continuous move component. This is a preset. It's got the references already set up for me. So I'm going to go ahead and add continuous movement onto my character. I might also change the move speed. Just I happen to know from personal experience that a move speed of one feels super slow and annoying. And I'm just going to go ahead and keep it uh, at four because I tested out before and I just know that's a good number. I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to try and play. Let's go ahead and click this button. I've got my headset on and we should find that I'm able to use my joystick to kind of move myself around. You can kind of tell that I'm moving probably by the edge of this plane and wherever I'm looking, I can kind of move. But you'll also notice one, I can kind of go off of the plane. The plane is basically just a visualization of where the floor is. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to probably want to fix that at the very least. We're going to have some sort of falling. I'm going to go ahead and make a more complicated environment. Not really that much more complicated. I'm just going to give myself a slope by duplicating this plane, moving it over here and basically just rotating it, something like that, for example. That'll work. That's a, that's a slope. And I'm also going to give myself a wall that I can't I shouldn't be able to walk through. I'm going to go ahead and create myself a cube. This cube, I might, I guess, reset it to here. And we're going to put it here. We're going to make it a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, something like this and maybe a little bit taller. So anyway, here is a wall that we should not be able to walk through. And yet, when I hit play, I'm going to be able to walk through it. All right, here's a wall. I'm going to walk right through it. Boom. I'm going to try and go up the slope. But you're going to notice that as I go into the slope, I, uh, I just go right underneath it because I don't have any physics pushing me up from the slope. It's basically just a visual representation of a slope. The way that you need to add physics collisions onto any object is by using a rigid body and a collider. So on our XR origin, it's our XR origin that we need to push up and down. We don't want to move only our camera or only our hands or whatever. We need to push the entire setup up and down. So it's our XR origin that's going to have the rigid body component. The collider is a bit of a different story. I'm going to go ahead and create a capsule collider on the XR origin just to demonstrate problems that can come up with the capsule collider. But let's say we have our capsule collider. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we should find that, yes, I am able to go up slopes. Uh, so if I go over here, you can kind of see me move in the scene view. I'm, I'm kind of a circle, I guess, a sphere. But I can go up this slope. Just, whoa, and then I fall over. Oh, my gosh. So that's a problem that happens when you receive forces from other objects is they can rotate you. But you pretty much never want to rotate the XR origin without 
constraining it basically you 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 don't want to rotate the xr or you can't be falling over you pretty much never want that so on my rigid body on the xr origin i'm gonna go ahead and freeze rotation along all axes any rotation that i do i'll probably want to do either with snap turn or, or have the user be in control of it i don't ever want something to rotate me when i'm not expecting it so now that we've frozen the rotation i'm gonna hit play and i'm gonna go look at uh our slope and I'm going to be able to climb it. So there we go. I'm going up the slope, success. And uh, I guess also I'll be able to jump off this cliff. Um, so there we go. Goodbye. And there we go. So gravity works, slopes work. But if I hit play and start this again, I'm going to find that well, technically, uh, my movement is restricted by this wall, right? Technically, the capsule is is preventing me from walking through this wall. I can 100% just stick my head right through it. I'm, I guess I'm outside of the bounds, so it's not really cooperating. But I'm, I'm hoping that you can see in the scene view that I can stick my head right through this wall. Ah, yeah, that's the problem with trying to demonstrate this. But yes, we can put our head right through it. And if I started to walk around in my scene, um, you would find that the camera could just go straight through walls and the collider does not match the position of my head at all, right? As I move my head around, where I'm standing should be the where the camera is, like right below the camera. But because the capsule collider is on the XR origin itself, it's just the root. And so if I start walking, collision is not going to work for me in the way that I expect it to. So how do we solve this problem with the collider? Well, what I usually do is I make the collider a separate object. Because rigid bodies inherit colliders from all children, we can mess around with the capsule collider on a separate game object and through code make it match the height and position of the camera without having to worry about like putting the collider onto the head itself. So for example, you could just put another collider onto the head and that would work, but I like to keep my collider just one thing just to avoid any weird nonsense that happens. I want I want the collider to only ever be where I'm standing. I'm going to go ahead on my XR origin. I'm going to create another empty game object. I'm going to remove the capsule collider from this XR origin. I'm going to call this game object player collider. I'm going to put my capsule collider onto here. And we're going to need a script that can through code set the height of our collider and also its position and also in addition to that we're going to need knowledge of where the floor is and this is just because the rift and the quest in my personal experience have different conceptions of where zero is with the camera offset. So I like to create my own empty game object. And I'm just gonna call this floor reference. And it's just going to be an empty game object that's at the height of the floor. And we're gonna use this transform in order to calculate how high our collider should be. So we now have our game objects that we're going to be messing with through code. Let's actually make the code. I'm actually going to go ahead and put my script onto the player collider game object. I'll create a new script. I'm just going to call it player collision. There we go. Once it compiles, I'm going to add it onto my player collider. And then I'm going to open it. In my script, I'm going to one, I'm going to need a reference to the head position because we're going to be using the camera's position in order to understand like where the collider should be. So I'm going to declare a public transform head. And I'm also going to declare a public transform floor reference because we're going to be using this for calculations of how high my head is off the floor so we can set up our collider properly. Next, I'm going to go into the update function and every single frame, I'm going to first calculate the height off of the floor that my head is. And we're just going to use that difference between the head height and the floor reference height for some calculations. So I'm going to declare a float. I'm just going to call this height and I'm going to set it equal to head dot position dot y minus floor reference dot position dot y. There we go. We now have the difference in the y, which is the y-axis. That's how high things are. So we now have a reference for the height. Next, we're going to want to make our collider's height the same as this height. So I'm going to need a reference to the collider. So I'm going to go ahead and declare a capsule collider here. I'm just going to call this my collider. 
and on start because I'm going to I have the script on the same game object as the capsule collider. I'm just going to use get component. So my collider, I'm going to set it equal to get component capsule collider. Now we have a reference to our capsule collider. And in the update function, I'm going to type my collider dot height. We're going to set it equal to height. There we go. That makes sense. And the next thing we need to do is teleport our collider to just under our camera. The reason for this is our collider's height, it goes up and it goes down, right? So we have like, so we have height divided by two up and height divided by two down. And so we want the center of our collider to be halfway between the head and the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set transform.position. I'm going to set it equal to head.position. And then I'm going to subtract half of height in the downwards direction. So, and then I'm going to say, let's say minus vector three dot up times height divided by two. So we're going to multiply an up vector times height over two, so half of my height, and I'm gonna move down by that amount. And this script should, in theory, when I go back into Unity and set things up, it should teleport my collider to halfway between my head and the ground and give me the height that I want in order to accurately reflect how tall I am. Maybe I'm sitting, maybe I'm you know standing up, and it'll just follow my height. So let's go into Unity and set that up. Back in Unity, I have two references here that I need to set. The first is the reference to my camera, which is my head. So I'm going to drag the main camera into the head reference, and I need a reference to the floor. So I'm going to drag my floor reference into that transform. And in theory, when I hit play, we should find that in the scene view in particular, you should be able to see that if I stand up, the capsule grows in height. And if I sit down, the capsule shrinks in height. And, you know, as I walk up to this thing, if I try and move my head into it, it just, it, it doesn't let my camera go through the wall. It just pushes back the XR origin. And of course, our uh, slope works exactly the same way we wanted it to. But yes, now, now I just simply cannot stick my head through the wall. Now you may want to make the actual like radius of the collider a little bit different because my head is stopping maybe a little bit too far away from the wall. Like if I was in the real world, it really wouldn't be that far. So I might change my radius to something more like point one or point two, and that will give me maybe a more accurate representation of where my head would be stopped when I put it into the wall. So I, now I get a lot closer to the wall before it starts pushing me back, but still I can get up, I can move around as I move my head around. I guess yeah, Zoom is not going to play nice with, with me kind of wobbling, but you can kind of tell that it, the capsule collider itself is following the position of my head and giving me an accurate representation of how my player might collide with the environment. That's going to be it for this module. Hopefully this helps you and we'll see you in the next module.